Shabbat Shalom, would you stand? Behold what manner of love Yahweh has given unto us. Behold what manner of love Yahweh has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of love Yahweh has given unto us. Behold what manner of love Yahweh has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Behold what manner of Yahweh is given unto us. Behold what manner of love Yahweh is given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called. Sons of Yah, that we should be called the sons of Yah. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It is so good to see you. May have a seat for a moment. Isn't it exciting to be in the Heavenly Father's house, to be together as a family? I thought about you. I prayed for you. Did you feel sometimes a little bit of a burning? I'm not talking about upset stomach here. <laughs> I was praying for you. The Heavenly Father would lay you in my heart and I would pray for the assembly knowing that sometimes some of us go through struggles throughout the week. So it's an awesome time to share those prayers with you. Have you had an exciting week? Yes. I got to tell you what, if you've had a rough week and you've been inundated with all the bad national news, you know what the best way to fight that is? Prayer singing songs of worship. In fact, I got this killer, killer scriptures I want to read for you. Is it okay to read scripture in the assembly? Listen to this. This is really cool. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and all that is in with me. Bless his holy name. Bless Yahweh, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, for he forgives all your iniquity. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. He satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Yahweh ex executes justice, judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moshe, he did his deeds to the children of Israel. Yahweh is compassionate and gracious slow to anger and plentiful in mercy. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not treated us according to our sins. Wow, I'm going to read that again. That is cool. He has not treated us according to our sins or repaid us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy. For those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so Yahweh has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. But when the wind blows over it, it is gone, and its place is no longer known. But the mercy of Yahweh is from everlasting to everlasting on those who revere him. His righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant, who remember to observe his instructions. Yahweh has set up his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. 
Bless Yahweh, you angels of his, mighty in strength and performing his word upon hearing the utterance of his word. Bless Yahweh, all you his armies, his servants who will do his will. Bless Yahweh, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Bless Yahweh, my soul. Amen. Woo! That gave me goosebumps. That was powerful stuff. Shows his love. We are not going to be accused of the sins and transgressions that we have committed when we have been bathed in the precious blood of our Messiah. Isn't that amazing? I can't even imagine going to heavens and standing before the Heavenly Father and he whips out his ticket book, all the tickets he could assign me for the things that I could have done, and of course this thing would roll out like a roll of newspaper, you know, and he's going to say, this is not accounted to you. For you have been washed by the precious shed blood of your Messiah and my son. Woo! That is good stuff. That just makes you excited to be in part of his Sabbath, doesn't it? Amen. It's refreshing to know that your spirit is being renewed like days of old. Isn't that exciting? Are we going to sing the Shema? Any? We are. We are. Would you like to do it now or later? Now. Now would be a good time. Let us stand and sing the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevon Malchuto. Blessed is the name of his esteemed kingdom for all eternity. Amen. Let's have the men come forward. We're going to bless the children. Isn't this an awesome time? We need some help with the Talits. Hallelujah. Blessing on all the children. Your fiery arrows against the enemy. Hallelujah. Please join with me and the music team in this. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Boaz. May you be deserving of praise. Strengthen them, Yahweh, and keep them from the strength. you long long Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Let's give Yahweh a hand for all our children. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. 
setting sun. His love endures forever, and by the grace of Yah, we will carry on. His love endures forever.
Listen to the voice of my pleadings. In the day of my distress, I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the mighty ones, O Yahweh, and like your works there are none. Let all nations you have made come and bow themselves before you, O Yahweh, and give esteem to your name, for you are great and are doing wonders. You are Elohim, you alone. Amen. Amen. We stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of Yahweh is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now, I pray how awesome is He. Together we sing, everyone sing, holy is Yahweh, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is Yahweh, God Almighty, the earth is filled Yahweh, God Almighty, 
Father in heaven applause today. Could we just join together and give him applause? Hallelujah. What a wonderful time of worship. You know, there's rejoicing in the heavens. The angels rejoice when, his, when Yahweh's people rejoice and sing praises unto him. You can be assured, hallelujah, one day we'll get to rejoice with Yahweh's angels, hallelujah. Um, this is a time where we come together and, and kind of form small groups around and we pray for one another. And as you do that, as you come together and um, pray, don't forget to pray for Jerusalem, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And you know, when you're paying, pray, praying for Jerusalem, you're pay, praying for Israel, know that it's not just the land that you're praying for. You're praying for peace there in the land, but you, when you're praying for Israel and Jerusalem, you're also praying for all of those people that call themselves by the name of, of Yahweh. Because we are Israelites, and one day Yahweh's gonna bring us back to the land of our inheritance. Hallelujah. So as you divide up into groups now, I just request that the elders come forward with their wives. And um, if you need to be anointed by one of the elders, please come up and we can do so and pray with you. Otherwise, pray with each other. Hallelujah.
Praise Yahweh. So I'm not Rick. He's sick. So he called me this morning and said that he didn't want to spread it around. So I was grateful for that. Hallelujah. So I just want to lift Rick up in prayer right now. Please join with me. Abba Father, we lift our pastor Rick up to you in prayer. We ask Yahweh that you touch his body. We ask, Father, that you put your, that cleansing blood of Yahweh Yeshua all through him. Cleanse every part of his, of his inward parts, Father. I pray, Yahweh, that that sickness be gone in Yeshua's name. Father, we have other people that are sick too, Yahweh, and we come against the enemy. We come against sickness in Yeshua's name. You don't want your people to be sick, Yahweh. You want your people to be lively and revived so we can be your servants Go forth in joy, worshiping you, lifting up your name. So we pray that for each person that may be sick and for our Pastor Rick, that he would have joy this day as he lifts up your name as well, as we do too. Thank you and praise you now and how you're going to work in Yeshua's name. Amen. We're going to go ahead and continue on our Torah portion that we were on this morning. So if you'll turn in your scriptures to Exodus chapter 12. So Exodus chapter 12. We talked this morning about the name of the Torah portion, which is Bo, which comes from the beginning of the Torah portion, which is Exodus chapter 10, verse 1, where it says, and Yahweh said to Moshe to go to Pharaoh, that's Bo, go to him. And how in the word Bo is uh, strength and power. Because when Yahweh tells us to go somewhere, doesn't he give us the power to do so? Yeah, he does. He gives us that strength and the meaning of Bo is abide and apply and attain. So he gives us this strength in order to abide in him. When we choose to do that, we choose to come into him. And, and brothers and sisters, it's a choice. We need to make that choice to, to humbly come before him, crying out for his strength, like so many of us have just done in our prayers before him just now. We're crying out to him to give us strength. And he does that when we cry out to him. Hallelujah. So as I was looking at the, the Torah portion and, and here in chapter 12, which is basically where we got to from our first service, um, chapter 12 is all about the event of Passover. And I just want to read uh, a little bit here and then we'll talk about it. Chapter 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon in the land of Mitzrayim, saying, This new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. So I want to stop right there. So how do we know what new moon this is? Well, if you turn to chapter 13, I believe, or actually, let's see. Turn to chapter 13 of Exodus. And it says in verse 4, today you are going out in the new moon Aviv. Okay, so Aviv is the name of the month. This is the first month for them. It says, this is the first month for you of the year. This is Aviv. So Aviv means green and tender ears. It's not your ears that we're talking about or our little 
little children's ears, green and tender, but it has to do with barley. So that's how the, the month was named. It had to do with aviv, or green and tender barley. They were, um, this, is, this is a festival of offering up to Yahweh first fruits. So it's an agricultural community, which some of us are agricultural, but most of us are not agricultural. Most of us have just jobs that we do in the secular world out there, and we don't have, we don't live off of the land, and we don't have um, crops that we live off of. But one day we'll be going back to that. Hallelujah. And we'll be all together in the land of our inheritance, and some of, some of us will have flocks and herds, some will have gardens and so on, but can you just imagine us all living together in a community where Yahweh's there in our presence. He brings down um, that place that he's prepared for us. Hallelujah. And we get to go up to Jerusalem to, to worship before him. Hallelujah. What a day that's going to be. You can see it in your mind's eye. But until then, Yahweh's grace is sufficient, isn't it? His strength is sufficient for us. So here uh, in this first verse, of ch or the second verse of chapter 12, it tells us this new moon is the beginning of months for us. This is a new moon of Aviv for you. And then he says, speak to the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth day of the new moon, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for his household. Last night, my wife and I tuned in Monty Judah, and we, we listened to him uh, talk about the Torah portion. And he brought out that this is the first time that the word congregation here is used. Up to this point, Yahweh has been instructing and talking to individuals. So you see here in verse 2, it says, speak to the congregation of Israel. So this word, if you, if you went up into the New Testament, would be the word church. Um, when Yeshua was talking to his Talmudim and, and um, Peter had just tried to get in the, tried to, tried to get in the way of what, Yahweh, what Yeshua was trying to do, and Yeshua said, upon this rock I shall build my church. He wasn't referring to Kepha, Peter, but he's referring to himself. So this is the first time this word is used um, in the Torah. And it, when I looked it up, it meant, it meant assemblage or assembly. If you've heard our brother Dale up here, he talks about the assembly. This is our assembly, right? This is not the church. This is the assembly. Well, in, in, our, in our Christian mindset, we think of the word church as just fine. But if you actually, if you dig into the word church in the background of it, you'll find that it has a lot of pagan roots. It actually comes from the word kirk, which is standing around in a, a group and worshiping a, um, a false deity. Anyway, so, so as I was looking at this word here in verse 3, speak to all the congregation of Israel, I saw that the... the in Hebrew, it means assemblage or assembly. So I looked the word up in the Greek, the word congregation. Um, it talks about in Acts about the congregation. So I looked that word up because it's Greek there. And it said assemblage or assembly. It's the same meaning. And I, I'm here to tell you that majority of the time, the Hebrew and the Greek do not line up in meaning. This time it does. This is the first time I've ever seen it line up. And the, actually, the word uh, in Hebrew would be a mikra. Not mikvah, but mikra. And it means the called out ones. And so here, um, it would be the called out ones. And what's, what's the word church in Greek? Does anybody remember what the word church in Greek is? Ecclesia, right? Ecclesia or ecclesia. And it means called out ones. So as I was looking at this, called out from what? 
what is Yahweh's people supposed to be called out from? From what? From the world, right? Okay. So here in verse 3, this, this chapter, chapter 12, has to do with the Pesach, the, the Passover lamb. Performing this event. There was one event, and all the rest of them after this are going to be remembrances. Okay, so this is the event, and he's talking to the congregation. Well, the congregation isn't just the sons. When he says in the Torah for Moshe to speak to the sons of Israel or to the children of Israel, if you look up the word children, most of the time it's talking about B'nai, which is sons. And this is the case where he's talking about the, to the whole assembly. That's women and children, men, sons, daughters, young and old. Hallelujah. He's talking to us all. And he's saying to, on this 10th day of the new moon or of this beginning of months, and we could go into a whole discussion on when is a new moon. You know, David and Jonathan were in the field and David was concerned about Shaul wanting to kill him. And he says, and they were talking about the new moon. And David said, see, um, the new moon is going to begin in a couple of days. As he pointed up in the sky and he saw the last little sliver of it disappearing. The sighting of the sliver, in my opinion, had to do with the sighting it disappearing, not reappearing. So a lot of, a lot of understanding has got lost in translation and so on in, in our mo modern culture. And when does the month begin? Mon month begins with the new moon. And the new moon... Um, according to Scripture, what I'm seeing in Scripture, and even scientifically, a new moon is that point at which the earth, the sun, and the moon are in alignment in one dimension, not total all three dimensions, but one dimension. It's called the conjunction of the moon. So would you say that life begins in the dark? How about a baby in the womb, mothers? out there? Does life begin in the dark? Yeah. Amen. So in Genesis 1, there was darkness, right? And then there became light. Hallelujah. So Yahweh wants his people to understand these things so, they, so that they won't be late in celebrating Yahweh's feast days with him. Can you imagine if Yahweh showed up to celebrate one of his feast days and nobody showed up because we had the wrong understanding. He wants us to understand, and he's working on that with us, isn't he? He's working. We're not all together yet in one mind, but Yahweh's going to bring us together into one mind. And I say that keeping Torah has to do with loving one another, just right where everyone is at in their own walk, and then Yahweh is going to make us one-minded. You can't force one-mindedness, but Yahweh's going to bring that about when we love each other and support each other. Hallelujah. So it says in verse 4, here chapter 12, and if the household is too small for this, um, for this lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him take it according to the number of beings, according to each man's need, you make your count for the lamb. In other words, how many people does it take to eat up the lamb? So if, it, if, if you have a huge family, great grandma and grandpa, grandpa and grandma, mom and dad, and, and how many, a dozen children, you may be able to eat up the lamb. But if you can't, then your neighbor next door can come in with you and, and you partake together. So this is actually a community event, isn't it? And it's, all, and it's a picture of our Messiah Yeshua, the Lamb of Yahweh. Yeshua, and, he, and he, he gave up his life for us. He defeated death so that we could have life in him. Hallelujah. I can't wait to get before him and praise him and thank him for what he's done in the physical there. We can do that now when we pray before him and get down on our face before him, can't we? And we praise him and thank him for it, and he, and he delights when we do that. Wouldn't you say so? Wouldn't you say that he delights when we praise him and thank him for what he's done? I do. Hallelujah. So, 
They were to take this lamb, and verse 5 says, let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old male, take it from the sheep or from the goats. Oh, so you could have a Passover kid. Not necessarily a Passover lamb, but you could have a Passover kid. It says so right there, which I've never done before. I've always had Passover lamb, haven't we? So when we come together on, pa on Pesach, Passover, and we have a Passover lamb together, do you think that it's a requirement that we're supposed to have lamb? Are we supposed to have lamb in order to fulfill Passover? What, what do you all think? Do, are we supposed to do that? That's, isn't that what it says right here? So if you're, if you're, say you're vegetarian or vegan or whatever, that's okay. But when you come together on Passover, you partake of the lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what Yahweh wants us to do, to partake of him. That's a picture of that's what you're doing. You're partaking of him, the lamb. He said when he was talking to his Talmudim in the Brit Kadashah, the New Testament, he said, he said, take this bread. This is my body, which is shed for you, and take this cup. And he gave it to them, and he says, drink all of it. You know, he said, he said this is my blood. You know, and I think he was... He, do you think that the, his Talmudim, the Jews, do you think they needed a teaching Seder to tell them how to do Passover? The Jews, did, do you think they needed that? I don't think they needed a teaching on how to do Passover. I think they were well aware of how to do Passover. But you know what? I think that Yeshua was explaining to them about himself in the Passover that they may have missed. That's from of old, but they miss, they're, they're missing it. They need to be restored. They need to be renewed, just like you and I need to be renewed in Yahweh's Torah, in his teaching and instruction for us. Hmm. How many times have you talked to a Christian brethren re recently in the church and, and they don't understand? Well, it's just because they haven't been taught. And they may believe something that's not true. My son was at, Garrett was at um, the youth group that some of the youth here are going to. It's called Fired Up, which is kind of a cool name, Fired Up for the youth group. He only wants us to be fired up in him, especially the youth, right? So that they can, well, not just especially the youth, us too, right? But, but he, he wants us to be all fired up, and, he, and this is the name of the group, the youth group, be fired up in our Messiah, be fired up in his word so we can learn and meditate on his word, and they're, and they're teaching them to memorize verses. But Garrett was talking with uh, his friend there, and he said, did you know that the Sabbath is on Saturday to his friend? And the friend goes, what? So Garrett brought him to the verse in Genesis about the Sabbath day. That six days, you know, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and the seventh day, you know, Yahweh was refreshed. He called that the Sabbath day, and we're to keep that. So he's telling his friend this and showing it to him in the scripture. And his friend is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the elders overheard and said, well, that's not true. Because see, in, in, in Acts, um, Paul was teaching on the first day of the week. So see, that was changed. And Garrett said, well, that kind of contradicts what it says in Genesis, doesn't it? And the elder just said, well, that's what we believe. And maybe, maybe that's okay for you, but that's kind of for the Jews. No, it's not. It's for all of us. This is for all Israel, isn't it? And so Garrett came home, and he was telling me about this, and he, he said, Dad, I, I didn't really know how to argue with him. And I said, well, you, you, you can't. I said, what you have to do is just quote the verses, and there's some more that you could use, and I'll show them to you. But then you have to let the Ruach do it. Because you can't force somebody to, to believe a certain way. You can't make them believe like you do. We were listening to um, some tapes by a, uh, um, a scientist about the brain. And some of you may know brain and the heart. Her name is Caroline Leaf. And she says... If you try to force somebody to be like you because your DNA is special just for you, there's tr how many trillions or whatever trillions of different combinations available that Yahweh has? 
So not one of us is exactly the same. So if you try to make somebody be exactly like you and believe exactly like you do, it's going to throw up walls and barriers because they're not going to be exactly that way. But we're walking on a path and Yahweh's going to bring us into alignment with Him in His Torah and His teaching. So we can be the same in that way, but you can't force somebody to see something. Only Yahweh in His Ruach can do that. So what you can do is what we've been taught in our spiritual warfare class, is you can pray against the enemy that's, that's telling that lie. Pray against the enemy that is speaking the lie into someone. Can a demon put a lie into your mind? You're all saying, yeah, yeah. A demon can put a lie into your mind. Can a demon do something to distract you? Like... Send a squirrel out in the road in front of you so that you swerve? Or whatever they want to do, they're going to try it. But it's like our teacher in the spiritual warfare class told us, Aaron Potter, he said, you know, demons are like flies. We have to shoo them away. We don't want anything there that they're going to be attracted to. So what do you think demons might be attracted to? Kind of like flies. Garbage in your life. That's right. Isn't that what flies come and land on? Is garbage. So we don't want the garbage in our life. So, so I guess what I'm saying is be gentle, be kind when you're discovering these different things in Torah and don't try to force them some down somebody's throat, but just tell them what it means to you. Tell them what a wonderful, um, uplifting it does for you as you're studying his word. And then they're going to say, well, I want that. Hopefully, but we can pray against the enemy's lies in um, our neighbors and, and fellow believers in Messiah. Hallelujah. How do we get off on that? I'm not sure. What verse were we on? Let the lamb be a perfect one. Verse 5. Let the lamb be a perfect one, a year old. Take it from the sheep or from the goats. Okay, so, so this year old lamb, why did it have to be a year old? Turn to, uh, let's see, Exodus chapter 34. Turn to Exodus 34. It says, Exodus 34, verse 25 says, Do not slay the blood of my slaughtering with leaven, and do not let the slaughtering of the festival of the Pesach remain until morning. Bring the first of the first fruits of your hand to the house of Yahweh your Elohim. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Does that mean you're not supposed to cook a goat in its mother's milk? You know. No, yes. It mean, it, in its mother's milk means it's nursing. So that applies to the Pesach as well. So if you go back to our Torah portion, it says in chapter 12, verse what we just read, verse 12, verse 5, take it from the sheep. So it has to be a, a lamb, a perfect one, a year old. So a year old, Don, how, how old are they when they stop, stop nursing most lambs? About a year old, okay? Okay, so that's one of the stipulations. Oh, well, it says a perfect one. Can you find a perfect lamb anywhere? I asked my neighbor that one time because he, he, we went to buy a lamb from him for Passover. And I said, well, it's got to be a perfect one. He says, well, you've got to be kidding me. Only Yahweh's perfect. Yeshua is perfect. Well, it says right there, we're supposed to get a perfect one. I showed him the verse. And he goes, well, go for it. See if you can find a perfect one. So I went through his flock, and I, f I found one that was perfect. It didn't have any blemishes on it. It didn't have any sores. It wasn't lame. It wasn't that. That's what it means. It doesn't mean without sin or, or you know, because when Yahweh talks, is talking to us, he tells us to be perfect before him, doesn't he? So it doesn't mean sinless. It just means in him we are considered righteous. And then all together we're considered kadosh, holy, before him, aren't we? So, 
we got the lamb from him, from my neighbor. We took him home, and I've told this before, but, but my kid's name, we, we had him, we got him on the 10th day, and we kept him to the 14th, and then we, we, we slaughtered him on that day, and we, we skinned him out, and I had a friend of mine that was a hunter that actually worked for me, and he came in and skinned him out, and we, and we roasted him and ate him. But, you know, it was hard to do. Anybody done that before? Take a lamb and have it with you in your home. Bring it into your home. They're they're so cute. Well, this lamb, we did that with, and we had a big lawn, and so it was out there nibbling on the grass, so my children named it Mo. It was the name of our lamb, Mo. And so when it came to slaughter, time to slaughter Mo, I was the one that had to do it because no one else wanted to. No one else would do it. They all stood around and watched me, but they wouldn't do it. You know, when I, I slit his throat, and it doesn't feel that, by the way, because we did, a, we did a cow a couple of years before, and we slit its throat, and it, went, it was eating out a bucket of grain, and I reached under and slit its throat, and it went back to eating from the grain. Didn't know. But it... it, it it, it, the, the heart pumps out the blood, and then it basically it just goes to sleep. And you know, Yahweh cares for his animals. Shooting an animal with a gun is traumatic. It throws out all kinds of, um, what is it out into the system that it throws out into the system? Adrenaline and all these different hormones out into the system, and, it, and, it, and they become like stiff. So Yahweh cares for his animals, and he wants it done the right way. Well, not all of us are going to be able to do that. We may go down to Roths and get a leg of lamb or whatever for our, but we can do the best that we can, can't we? We can make sure that it's um, killed the right way and or we could cashier it or whatever we need to do to make it suitable for Passover. And you can get lamb that's kosher for Passover. says in verse 6, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same new moon. So you get it on the 10th, and you keep it till the 14th. So you keep it four days. And it's not 10, 11, 12, 13. 10, let's see, 10, 11, 12, 13. Is that how you count it? No, you count it 10 to 11 is 1. 11 to 12, 12 to 13, 13 to 14. And you, and you take it in the daytime so that you can see it till you pick it out. Okay, so when Yeshua came into Jerusalem on the 10th of Aviv, on Palm, what day? Palm first day? Palm Sunday, okay. That's the beginning of the examination. So that's when Yeshua wrote in, came into Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem on the donkey. And he came, he came in on a donkey, didn't he? He didn't come in on a horse. He's going to come back on a horse, right? What's a horse represent? Conquering, victory. What's a donkey represent? Lowly. Um, animal of burden, right? And so that's what Yeshua came as, to take our burden. We're supposed to take on the yoke of Yahweh, the yoke of Yeshua. And when we get into his yoke, his, the the burden's light. It's like, it's like if you got into his yoke and he's on the other side, Yeshua's on the other side, your feet are probably going to be off the ground. You're just going to be carried along because of of the strength that Yeshua has. and, And he wants to give that to you. So all this is a picture of him, our Messiah, Yeshua. So you're supposed to keep it until the 14th. And then it says, Then the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall slay it between the evenings. Between the evenings, what's that mean? When's the evening of the 14th begin? And when's, when's the evening of the 15th begin? That's between the evenings. That's a day starts in the evening again. Here's another picture, if you will, of the day. Okay, so you're to take it and you're to get it into roasting mode by at least 3 p.m. so that it can be done so that you can have it and eat of it 
on the beginning of the next day, which is the 15th, when you eat unleavened bread with it. So it's not another event. It, it's Passover. It's pa the Pesach is, is, is the preparation, is slaughtering that Pesach so that you can eat it with unleavened bread on the first day. And how many, how many days do you eat unleavened bread? Seven. Okay, so the first day you're eating it with the lamb. And then you eat it the rest of the days. So the whole event of Passover or Pesach or unleavened bread begins on the 10th and ends on the 21st. Do you get that? Because on the 14th, the beginning of the, the end of the 14th, the, the 15th, you start eating unleavened bread that night with the lamb. Maybe you all know that already. You all got that all down, right? You know exactly how to, we're supposed to do Passover, right? So when Passover comes up this year, you all know exactly how to do it, and you can be, you can be meeting in your homes and doing it, and those that don't have a place to go, we're going to have a place here where we can come together and we can eat, we can have Passover together here. Hallelujah. What a wonderful time of year. It's like, it's like, could you say that it's your favorite festival? Well, they're all our favorite festival, right? But it's nice to be able to say for each one of them, that's my favorite festival. Oh, man. Hmm. It says, take some of the blood in verse 7, and you put it on the two doorposts and on the lentil of the house where they are to eat. The lentil is that cross piece, and the, and the doorposts are on the side. So if you put blood on all the way around, what letter does that form in the Hebrew? The chet, right? The chet, what's chet mean? The, isn't, there, isn't there meanings for each letter? What's chet to mean? What? Fence. Okay, it's a, a, if you look at a chet, kind of a U-shape, and you, it's like a corral, you can come in there. So you're coming into it. But the meaning of chet, chet is life. So chet is life. So when, here, it says, um, Oh. Uh. Eat the flesh on that night, verse 8. Eat the flesh on that night, roasted with fire, with unleavened bread, with bitter herbs. You shall eat it. So what's that night that you're eating it? What's the day, the 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 Aviv day, or the, the, the number? Number 15, right? Okay, so it's the 15th of the month. So, I've done this. I've taken the, quote, new moon, which, whichever one you, you want to do, but I took the, the conjunction, and I counted from there 15 days, and it fell on exactly a full moon. If you take it from the sliver and you count 15 days, it's not going to be a full moon. There's maybe a proof for you to consider if you're, if you're a sliverist <laughs> and you're not a conjunctionist. But at any event, Yahweh's going to bring us all together in one mind um, one day. And you know what? What we were positive we knew and we had it and that was right may not be. He's going to show us. And I just, I, I long for that day when we can be together with him and he's going to reveal all these things to him. And, we, and we're going to, as Paul says, we're going to see him clearly, not through a glass dimly anymore, but we're going to see him clearly and he's going to reveal to us things that we, we, we missed and we're going to rejoice. Hallelujah. So this is the event of Passover, and there was only one event, and all the rest are remembrances. So do you have to put the blood on your doorposts and lentils today? Do we have to put it on, on the doorposts? No, we don't have to. 
I, way back when we first started, back in 96, we had some people that did that. They killed the lamb and they put the blood on the lentil. And I said, well, that's great, you know, but that was for the event. Um, there's no angel of death coming over that, that you have to be protected from right now. But there is an angel of death. And in, unless we're in Messiah Yeshua, that angel of death, we're dead. We need life in him. Hallelujah. Hmm. It says, this is how you're to eat it in verse 11. With your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, you shall eat it in haste, for it's the Pesach of Yahweh. So those were things specific to the event. Your loins girded, your staff in your hand, sandals on your feet, because you were going to get ready to go. Yahweh's going to take you out and deliver you. And that's what Yahweh wants to do to us today. He wants to deliver us. He wants us to take us out. So you can do all those things. You can have, get your staff and your sandals, and, and you can do these things for Passover. But remember that this was specific for the, the event. Whatever helps us to draw closer to Yahweh and his ways is what we want to do. Hallelujah. So as I was looking at the Passover here and considering the word Passover, there's the word Pesach, and then there's the word Passover. And they're two different words. The, the Pesach is the lamb. It's the lamb that is slain, picture of Yeshua being slain. The Passover says that, that um, in verse 12, here in chapter 12 of Exodus, it says, And I shall pass through the land of Mitzrayim on that night, and I shall strike all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, and all the mighty, and all the mighty ones of Mitzrayim I shall execute judgment. And verse 13 says, And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And the houses where we are right now, when we're going to do Passover, the blood covering of Yeshua is on us. Is it not? Isn't the blood covering of Yeshua on you? Haven't you cried out to Yahweh for his blood covering over you? Well, when you do that, his blood covering is on you, and, and the, the wicked one cannot come in. We can forbid the wicked one in Yeshua's name because his blood covering is on us. Do you, do you know demons hate Yeshua's blood? And so we can claim that blood over us and they don't want to be around. So it says here in verse 13, And the blood shall be assigned to you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I shall pass over you and let the plague not come in, not come on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Mitzrayim. There's a misconception here. It says that he's going to pass over us. We're reading from the English. He doesn't pass over you and leave you. He passes over on top of you and stays there and hovers over you and protects you. He is our covering. It's not like in the movies you've seen in Hollywood. I, my kids used to get mad at me when we'd watch biblical movies, because I'd pick them apart. And they go, Dad, you're ruining the movie. They said, just let us watch this in peace. Well, I'm just trying to tell you the way it really is. Well, maybe later, Dad, because they wanted to enjoy the movie, right? Well, yeah, there's enjoying the movie, and then there's actually knowing what really took place and what it really means. Okay, so I had a lot of fun with it, and so did they. Well, maybe they didn't. Maybe they were frustrated with that. Are, are you zealous for what you believe? Are you zealous for Yeshua? Are you zealous for his ways? And you want to tell everybody about it, right? Just like when you first became a believer, you wanted to run around and tell everybody about the life that you have now in Yeshua because you, you, you fell on your face in repentance, recognizing that you didn't deserve anything, and, and you cried out to him and asked him to save you, and he came in and saved you. And you want to tell everybody about that. Yeah. I had a sergeant when I was in the sheriff's department. His name was Chuck Lutweiler. And he was the squirreliest little guy. He could shoot clay pigeons out of the air with his handgun. He was really good. We called him Dirty Harry. 
But when he accepted Messiah, Yeshua, he ran around and wanted to tell everybody, and people didn't really want to hear. Especially from Dirty Harry. <laughs> Yahweh's delighted when we do that, when we want to share him with others. I just pray that in the days ahead when we share him with others, that we also come against demonic entities and command them to be silent so that those that we're sharing with won't have that lie being spoken at them so that the Ruach of Yahweh can come in and convict them. Hallelujah. Hmm. It says in verse 14, says, and this day shall be to you a remembrance, and you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yahweh throughout your generation. Celebrate it as a festival, an everlasting law. Does that mean that it's done away with some point and we don't need to do it? Well, so why was it that when you were in the Christian church that you didn't do it? We weren't taught, were we? Maybe our eyes were blinded at that time. Do you know what? With Ezekiel's punishment, the, the punishment for all 12 tribes of Israel was lifted right about 1996 to 98. So now we can see. So, so that's true for all of the tribes of Israel and those, I dare say, that are brought in that aren't bloodline tribes of Israel but when they are adopted in, they become a natural branch. They're not an adopted child. So that means the Arab that's not in the line, when he accepts Messiah and Shua and falls on his face and repents, is recognizing that's the only way to life and cries out to him, then Yahweh comes into his life and he becomes an Israelite. Yeah. Hallelujah. I praise Yahweh for his amazing power. Mm. So it's a festival forever, an everlasting law. And when we read this, if, you, if, if we're reading it with, with open hearts, and we're not reading, with, reading it with a theology hat on, that's, that when you read it, you go, oh yeah, that sounds right, but ah, that's not what I believe. So who are we supposed to believe? Are we supposed to be believe men? Or are we supposed to believe what Scripture says? When I was listening to Monty Judah last night, he said, stop listening to men and open the Bible for yourself and read it with Yahweh's Ruach. Look at what Yahweh says. Stop listening to what men say. Hallelujah. You know, we just started actually listening to Monty, he's listening to a couple nights now. And I remember years ago, back in um, 95, 96, I started listening to him, and I go, this man has got, is a really good Torah teacher, and I got all his tapes, and I listened to all of them on all of the, the um, Torah portions. And I learned a lot from him. We can learn a lot from each other but we don't want to lift one man and put him on a pedestal, do we? We have to glean. I mean, there be, may be some things that some of the Torah teachers out there say that you may not agree with or may not be true when you look at Scripture and you say, well, why doesn't this Torah teacher believe that? Doesn't he look at it? Isn't he looking at Scripture? Well, yeah, we're all looking at it. And we all believe that what we believe is right. And we're all a little different. So what's, you know, if, if we all believe what we believe is right and we're all a little different, what's the answer? The answer is to love each other just like Yahweh told us to do. Love your neighbor as, your, as yourself, just like Yahweh loved you. And then he's going to bring us into one mind together. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hmm. You know, in the, in the New Testament, when you read through the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's verses in there that appear to say that Yeshua did 
a Passover Seder with his Talmudim, with his taught ones. But if you look at the word bread in those, each one of those, it's the word raised. Now, I believe that Yeshua was probably doing a teaching to them that it's not like his Talmudim, his Jewish counterparts needed a teaching on how to do Passover, but they certainly needed restoration and things that they may have been missing about himself, about Yeshua in the Passover. So in what I understand through all those passages in the New Testament, um, in fact, let's turn to Matthew. We've got to get up to where the Passover is in Matthew. Chapter 20. Twenty-six. Look at verse 26, verse 2. It says, well, let's read verse 1. And it came to be, when Yeshua ended all these words, he said to his taught ones, you know that after two days the Pesach takes place, and the son of Adam is to do is to be delivered up, to be impaled. What was Yeshua referring to? He's refer referring to he was going to be the Passover lamb. Well, let me ask you a question. If we know from Torah that the lamb is slain on the 14th, and then Passover takes place that night, how can Yeshua be the Passover lamb and eat Passover with his Talmudim at the same time? It says um, that after two days, the Pesach takes place. That's the slaying of the lamb. So it would have to have been the 12th of Aviv that he's talking about here. Okay, and then he goes on to say, um, you know, let's look at verse 17 of chapter 26 here in Matthew. On the first day of unleavened bread, the taught ones came to Yeshua saying to him, where do you wish us to go to prepare to eat the Pesach? Do you see something wrong with that statement? Where do you wish us to go to prepare the Pesach on the first day of unleavened bread? Well, the lamb would have already been slain and they ate it that night. So, so in italicized in this passage in my Bible is the word day. So on the first of unleavened bread, the word day is not there. On the first of unleavened bread, his taught ones came to Yeshua saying, where do you wish us to go to, for, to prayer for you to eat the Passover or the Pesach? Okay? Remember I told you that unleavened bread, the phrase unleavened bread, can refer, it refers to from the 10th of Aviv all the way to the 21st of Aviv. They, it can refer to that. Unleavened bread, the festival of unleavened bread, refers to the whole event. The whole event can also be referred to as the Pesach or the Passover. The whole event from the 10th to the 21st. Okay? So what they're referring to is this event on the first of unleavened bread. This would be, from what I've researched out, the day before the 13th of Aviv. Because wasn't, wasn't on the 14th of Aviv, brothers and sisters, wasn't Yeshua came and arrested by night and brought and was examined and then was put on the execution stake on the 14th and, was, and, and on, at 9 o'clock in the morning and then by 3 p.m. That was, it was finished? Okay, so on that day, the 14th. So his, his last supper would have had to been the evening of the 13th. And then he went out into the garden with his Talmudim. There's verses all through um, that seem to contradict this, but they're, mis they're either misinterpreted or mistranslated. Okay? And I can show you all of them, but we're almost out of time. But I just wanted to show you that, that Yeshua is the Passover lamb and he kept Torah. 
So he would have went to the execution stake freely, giving up his life for us on the day that Torah prescribes, which would have been the 14th day. Hallelujah. This is not a mournful time. This is a rejoicing time, a time of rejoicing when our master gave us his life up for us. Hallelujah. I'm going back to the to Exodus here. It says in verse 24 of Exodus 12, it says, And you shall guard the word as a law for you and your sons forever. You know, I am grateful to my parents for showing me who the Master is, the Messiah is, my Savior is. And I learned of him as Jesus back in those days. I know his Hebrew name now, and that's what I prefer to use, but it's the same guy. Jesus and Yeshua, this is the same guy. He would turn to you if you cried out either of those names. If that's, what's, that's, if that's all you know him by is Jesus. If you know him by Yeshua, I, I would hope that you would use Yeshua because that was his real name. But he's the same guy, and he wants us to love him forever just like he loved us. So here in verse 25, it says, for you and your sons forever. And verse, or verse 24, in verse 25, it says, and it shall be when you come to the land which Yahweh gives you, as he promised, that you shall guard this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what does this service mean to you? Then you shall say, it is the Pesach slaughtering of Yahweh who passed over the houses of the children of Israel and Mitzrayim when he smote the Mitzrites and delivered our households. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. So we're bowing our heads and worshipping before Yahweh right now for what he's done for us. I think and praise Yahweh for our children that are not afraid to speak the truth of the Torah, even when they may not know everything. We're, we don't know everything. Can't we still speak the truth? We can give these verses. And, if, and you know what? Yeshua said to his Talmudim when he was leaving them for the last time, he says, he says that the Ruach, my Ruach, that, that other part of me will come to you and remind you of the things that I said to you when you, when you were with me. And you will get what you need at the moment that you need it. You know, when Rick called me this morning, I was just rejoicing because I knew that Yahweh would give me the words that I needed um, to say to you. His Ruach comes and fills us when we need it, an extra measure of it when we need it. His, his Ruach's always in us, but he gives us this extra measure when we need it. I don't have anything prepared. I'm just, I'm just going on what Yahweh's telling me to tell you. I have done some Torah study, but, but I don't know. I like, my dad told me years ago, son, the more you learn, the more you're going to realize you don't know. And that had to do with building, carpentry, and so on. It applies right here to the Torah because, because the Torah has to do with building building our faith, building our belief. Isn't that right? Don't you need to be built up in belief? We do. We need to be built up in belief. And when we come together on Shabbat, we build each other up and we encourage each other and we rejoice together. And we praise Yahweh for his amazing work that he did for us. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Abba, Father, we praise you once again for your amazing work that you've done on the execution stake for us. We praise you, Yeshua, that you fulfilled the Torah. 
that nothing, nothing is done away with. There may be some things that we can't do right now because we're not in the land, but it doesn't mean that in a spiritual mind's eye, we cannot bring an offering before you, praising you for what you've done. And when that offering that we bring before you in our mind's eye is put on the altar, it goes up as a soothing um, fragrance in your nostrils, Yahweh, that you delight in it when we offer ourselves up before you. We give of ourselves. Nothing we have is ours. Everything belongs to you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. I praise you and thank you. In Yeshua's name and in your name, O oh Yahweh. Amen. Announce, announcement time. Hallelujah. Boy, that was good stuff. I really appreciated that. And I don't want us to get hung up on the technicality of Passover and the reason why we kind of get hung up sometimes because we want to do exactly what the Heavenly Father instructs us to do. We want the truth and apply it to our life. There's a lot of noise out there, different Torah teachers, people introducing new things. But we have a responsibility ourselves to investigate. Have you heard of the term Bereans? We should all be professional Bereans. We investigate the Heavenly Father's scriptures and let him reveal to us what he wants us to learn. It's an amazing opportunity. Well, shall we get to the announcements? It's, announcements can be exciting, don't you think? Yeah, I can tell you guys just bored to tears. Okay, calendars are still available for $5. I believe uh, we've got some in the, in the back and then just stick it in the Zadik box. And that's important. What are the donations for? Write it on the front of the envelope and stick it in, in the box, okay? And by the way, uh, Steve reminded me, not only does he have large print, but he has regular print uh, ISRs now, okay? So if you have an, an, a left eye that takes large print and a other eye that takes me, you, have, you can have both Bibles, right? Also, we know that uh, tithing records are available. If you haven't got yours yet, see Elizabeth. And after today, I believe you're going to mail them out, correct? Okay, excellent. Prayer is on Thursday at 5.30. We're back to 5.30 for prayer on Thursday. Tomorrow's a special day, isn't it? I'm not talking about Super Bowl. Tomorrow, we're going to be here and meet at 10 o'clock, and we're going to ratify the budget for the assembly. So, so be here. I know you're just all giddy with excitement, but please be here. From a 10 to 11, we'll be brief, we'll be succinct. We want to let you folks know what we're doing, get your input, and then you guys can go forward and do whatever you need to do about the Super Bowl. Also, I have a note here from a very important person in my life, my wife. She says, please remind them not to park on top of the sidewalks. The women have a tendency like to walk on those with their shoes so they don't walk through the gravel. And if you've got a bumper hanging over the sidewalk, it's kind of tough to do so. So it's just a reminder. We need your help on Sat Sunday, the first day of the week, to help clean the assembly. Don needs some help on that. If you can spare an hour, 30 minutes to come down here and help clean this assembly, that would be most appreciated. Could, could you spare 30 minutes to an hour on Sunday to do that? Could you guys do that? I believe they start at 9 o'clock. Is that correct, Ken? 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So somebody will be here about 10 o'clock for sure. But we have that right. But we will still take volunteers. If you want to, uh, Don's not here today, but he will be back. If you feel like volunteering, and we could dearly use your help, a lot of hands makes the work really light. Yeah. Why don't we, uh, let's clean the assembly tomorrow morning. Let's get, if you can come by together and come to me or, or the other elders and get your 
That would be awesome. Did you, did you hear what he said? If, if you wouldn't mind coming a little bit early before the, uh, the budget thing, we could clean this thing up, get it all ready to go. Then we could all go home and enjoy the day. Can you imagine? Yeah. But Hanak Young will be here. Did you have that deal? Okay, Hanak Young will be here tomorrow um, from 4.30 to 8.30. I know it's kind of right in the dinner hour, so eat before you come. Hanak is an Orthodox Jew. He's going to be talking about what he sees in the Torah about um, restoration of Judah rec um, coming back to the Messiah. And they will one day, by the way, Yesh Messiah Yeshua. Um, Hanak does not believe in Yesh Messiah Yeshua yet. And then he's going to also be talking about um, Ephraim and what he sees in the Torah about Ephraim and their um, restoration and, their, and Messiah Yeshua. So, Thank you. So if you guys can come early tomorrow, a little bit early and help us clean, that would be awesome if you would do that. Thank you so much for that, Steve. Um, we're going to, there's also, this is for the men. Men's Bible study at Steve's house on Tuesdays at 630. Are they suggested to bring snacks? <laughs> Food is always a good idea, all right? <laughs> Had cookies, okay. Cookies, cake, pies, side of beef, anything like that would work. <laughs> so, and then we're going to have our first men's breakfast, February 12th, here at the assembly at 9 o'clock. Gals, isn't that a great idea to get the guys out of the house? Huh? Or you want them back in the house? Anyway, we're going to be here having breakfast on, set, uh, on the 12th at 9 o'clock a.m. How many men would be interested in getting together just the guys having breakfast? How many of you folks would be interested? How many of the men? Two. Okay. <laughs> I challenge you, gals, get your guys out of the house and get together with the guys. Oh, men will be cooking. Uh, okay, maybe we just bring your milk and cereal, okay? Maybe we maybe ought to do that. Anyway, it's going to be a fun time. And by the way, I believe they're going to introduce some ideas about getting together and have work crews and things like that so we can really minister outside these walls. There is a big world out there that loved would have men who believe in the Bible come on their properties and help them out. What an awesome, awesome ministry that would be. Okay, they are extending the recipe book to the end of February. Uh, Dee's out of town due to some family issues, so they're going to extend receiving recipes until the end of February. And then we are reminded uh, by Jude, she wants me to remind you, they still need help in cleanup. There's been a little bit of an assumption that the people who are in the kitchen area that is spending some time preparing the food and getting us helping so we can have it, and what I mean by preparation, making sure the spoons are out and the dishes are out, that they're also responsible for cleanup. Not true. We are responsible for our own dishes and our own plates. And it's nothing wrong with grabbing a rag and a little squirty bottle and cleaning the top of the table, right? Right? <laughs> Okay, please uh, help us out in the kitchen. And remember the Oneg rules. Who goes first? Who goes second? And then what happens to the children? What happens to the children? I eat. Find an adult. Find any adult. Whether your mom or dad, find an adult. Yes. We're, we're going to monitor that. I've heard there's been a rumor of snow, and I, I'm a little bit cynical when they come to Oregonians predicting the weather. I mean, I hope you guys understand. I mean, we were supposed to have freezing rain Wednesday, and then they changed their mind Thursday, then they changed their mind Friday, and then we got three drops at our house, and that was it. I was like, you know, not, not much of anything. So we're going to monitor, but thank you so much for bringing that up. Okay, uh, just a reminder, uh, there's also going to have um, 
uh, where is it here? Do, 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 do. Oh, the memorial for Steve Tony will be on February 11th here at the assembly at 6 p.m. So please remember that for those who are interested on that. How many of you already got their sh Shema bracelet? Isn't it a wonderful, it's a wonderful statement, isn't it? You kind of feel cool, looking good. Black goes with everything. White goes with everything. Have you, has anybody been asked what that says on your wrist yet? And, and what did you tell them? Anybody want to share what you told them? Or did you keep it a secret? Or you weren't sure what it said? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you for suggesting. I, my granddaughter had asked me what that was, and I told her it's a Shema. And I, I read it. To, I mean, I told her, I read it and everything. And she didn't say anything. I'll just leave it alone, you know. So, but Rex knew. Rex knew what the Shema was. So, See, I, I, I love the fact that Corey did this, and I think Corey wants us all to learn Hebrew. So how can you witness to somebody if you're wearing something that's in Hebrew, you have no idea what it says? You're going to have to learn the 22 consonants of Hebrew. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> Boy, you guys are kind of going like this. I'm not quite sure if that's exciting at all. Okay. Any other announcements? Yes, Mr. David. I'll share. I went to a doctor's appointment and had the uh, Shema bracelet on, and that's what he asked. What is that? And so I spoke to him in Hebrew and told him what it was, and he looked at me with the deer in the headlight. <laughs> and then I explained it to him in English, and he said, that's a really good thing to have on your heart. Yeah, all right. So we got one seat planned. Anybody else want to share? It's been kind of fun for me. Uh, you, uh, I know I'm strange. You guys already know I'm kind of strange, right? Have you ever kind of led your hand because it's on there? You want, kind of want people to see? So you, you use your pencil in front of people on purpose and say, Hi, my name is Dale. I'm so pleased to meet you. How you doing? <laughs> anyway, it's a great witnessing tool. To me, it also reminds me of, of today's common day to, uh, tzitzit. Isn't that great? It's kind of a reminder. So anyway, I encourage all of you, if you get a chance, we got them in the back. We have white ones and black ones. And if you would put a $2 donation in there, Corey's been so Awesome to donate that the funds to Cornerstone, so that's a wonderful thing. Okay, anybody have a testimony they would like to share? Ha. Ah. I was over at a, a Goodwill uh, employment department the other day, and uh, they set me up with an instructor girl or whatever, to help you find work, and she was a full-blooded Hebrew. And I thought, well, hmm. So the next day I went down there, and I took her one of the little books that uh, Rick wrote and gave says, I'm going to read this. So it was, it was a good testament. I invited her to come to the congregation here. And I haven't seen her yet, but we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? It was that boring of a week. Nobody had anything neat to say. Heavenly Father didn't protect you or anything. He didn't provide for you. He didn't heal you of sniffles or a cold. Yeah, I don't believe that. Anyway, I want to thank the Heavenly Father so much for all that he does and the provision. Let us never take what he does for us for granted. We should ask him every day and thank him every day for his provision. Anyway, Okay, are we ready to be blessed? <laughs> everybody, I want everybody, let's, uh, let's do this quickly because I think we're losing you. Everybody practice how to yawn. All right? Let's all yawn at once. Ready? Oh. Yeah, let's get it out of our system. Let's everybody yawn and stretch. Now let's get ready. Are you ready to be blessed? Yes. Please stand. It says at the end of Exodus chapter 6, This is how you bless the children of Israel. Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, this is how you bless them. Say to them, Yahweh bless you and guard you. Yahweh may cause, make, cause his face to shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahweh lift up his face upon you and give you peace. 
Thus they shall put Yahweh's name on the children of Israel, and Yahweh himself shall bless you. Yivarechecha Yahweh v'yishmarecha Ya'er Yahweh panavalecha v'kunecha Yisahaha Yahweh Panavalecha Vehasem lecha Shalom Bring us back to you, Yahweh, and we shall return. Renew our days, renew our days as of old. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.